at, I was muted. Originally, I was going to go live at 1230. But I had some stuff to do. I had to go to the grocery store and things of that nature. But we are here because, like I said, initially, the plan was never three o'clock. It was always supposed to be earlier. So as we give people a chance to come in, the people that are already here, let me know how you're doing, how you're feeling today. Um, initially, we were going to go live next week. I was going to wait again to next week, Thursday. but. I really want to have this conversation. As you come in, I'm giving people a couple of minutes to come in, right? So I don't have to repeat myself. I will repeat myself for you. I'm in a really good mood today. Um, I will repeat myself for you as many times as I need to, but I just want to give more people a chance to come in. Hello, everybody. How are you? How are you? How are you? How are you? I really I started grease on my scalp again recently and it feels good on my scalp. Well, I'm really glad that you shared that with me, beautiful, but naturally, KB Beauty, I need you to do me a favor. Um, I'm gonna speak really frank today. I'm going to be um coming from love. But I need you to know that your scalp feels real good right now, but everything works until it doesn't. And that's what I want to talk about today. So let's get right into it. My bang, I was going to curl it. I, I mean, flatten it, but I'm curling it later. So I'm not flattening it. I want that hump to be there. So mind your business. Okay. So again, Lovely, please know I'm not attacking nobody. Today we're getting to facts, right? So before I hop into this, and I have receipts today, we 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 we're using, we're getting in the proof, right? So um <laughs> the 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 reason that I'm always talking about the same thing, right, is because it's the one thing that if we get a handle on, see, that's what happens. And by the way, I've been a licensed cosmetologist for over a decade. I My job for over a decade has been to look at the person who's on TV, on camera, and be like, excuse me, stop, and fix hair. So I'm looking at myself in the camera. If it's the hair out of place, I'm going to fix it. I can't help it. Okay, I love y'all. But one of the main issues, right, that we have a problem with is letting go of old habits. So instead of me talking you to death, we are going to start with this comment. The majority of my clients are over 50 right now, right? As it pertains to me doing consulting and healing scalp disorders, scalp infection, alopecia, all of my clients get results, all of them. Check my reviews. But there is, even though, even though it's what I do professionally. So today, what I'm doing is kind of giving everybody a free counseling session, right? A free consul consultation. But if we could change our focus and understand what we're about to talk about today, then it will unlock all of these issues that we have. And I want you guys to first, as you listen to this, there are a bunch of you. Everybody's main argument is my mama used to do it. My grandma agrees my scalp. Everybody agrees my scalp. But we also have other things like cradle cap and things of that nature that are always in family. So let's listen to this. Let's read this. Okay. So. Not this one. <laughs> okay. So this wonderful, wonderful person said, I had cradle cap as a baby and suffered with SD, which stands for seborrheic dermatitis, most of my life until I applied your wisdom. Shampoo and condition with both products in the same family, as well as blow dry in style once a week. I do not apply oil to my hair unless needed to detangle before shampooing. <laughs> my cerberic dermatitis is gone. My hair is shiny, healthy, and manageable. I'm enjoying my hair for the first time ever. No more tears, no more embarrassment, and painful treatments. I can wear black clothes. <laughs> 
Can you imagine how I feel? I can go on and on about my results. Please leave these oils, butters, and petroleums alone. Listen, I am 63. I'm 63. I'm 63 and thought I was going to die with seborrheic dermatitis because because it was with me all of my life, but not anymore. Send out. Thank you so much. <laughs> so most of the comments that I get are from women in their early 20s. Like, you don't know what you're talking about, my grandma. That's your grandma. She's 63. Cradle cap is not something that you're supposed to have. Cradle cap. It's seborrheic dermatitis and babies. Do you hear me? Cradle cap is seborrheic dermatitis and babies. But in our community, whenever we see dry scalp, we think oil and butters. And guess what? The people who are selling y'all the products, the chemists who are selling y'all products, they know this. Dermatologists know this. And they also, there are some dermatologists that will tell you, do not put oil on your scalp. Do not grease your scalp. But we fight and we argue, but it's for other reasons, which we're getting into next. This beauty said, I was just having this conversation the other day. I'm sick of worrying about my hair. Why do I have to look like I'm about to rip the runway every day? Other races just make sure they look decent and clean and keep it pushing. Of course, a woman needs to understand the assignment when that time comes. But bro, I agree. It's time to regain our focus and put our energy somewhere else. Can somebody give me a response in the comments if you see where I am going with this? We have come so locked on one set of rules, right? And, and again, I want you in love to listen to what I am saying. For the last, for over a decade, right? Cosmetologists like myself have been fighting with product companies, fighting with social media, fighting with all of these other people for your attention. But good cosmetologists have never changed. Most people, if you've been going to the same cosmetologist for more than about five years, she uses the same exact products. Like she hasn't switched up. Hold on. Let me get to y'all comments for a second. Grease does nothing but clog your follicles. Say it. I'm sorry. <laughs> My husband is a child. Girl, this will always be a natural go-to. They aren't using other products correctly and say old school methods work best. But see, and this is the thing. I'm not here to old sin, right? Old sin would debate, would want to go back and forth. I am so past that. It, it will drive you absolutely insane. I'm not here for the women who want to debate about that. If that's what you want to believe, if you want to grease your scalp, if those are the things that you want to do, my love, you keep it up. My clients are, the 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 post that I just read y'all, that woman was 63 years old, has had seborrheic dermatitis her entire life, not to mention what most black women view is, oh, I put oil in it and it was better. She's been doing that her whole life, her entire life. And at 63, she decided to make some changes and things that she's been dealing with, surgery dermatitis that she's been dealing with her entire life is over now. And this is the thing. When I first went to cosmetology school, the only thing you learn in cosmetology school is the things that you need to learn to pass day board, the things that you need to know to do hair professionally so you can pay taxes and buy a house and a car like everybody else. But as you go deeper into your education, you begin to learn more. 
And I, the, the things that I learned, I learned from older Black women in the industry, older women from other races in the industry. So the thing is, if, if everybody is so gun ho on the past, did it work out? No, it did not. When we go and look at the patterns, cerberic dermatitis is something that haunts most Black women. When I say there's not, there's almost no other scalp infection, it's either cerberic dermatitis or CCCA or different forms of traction alopecia that my clients are dealing with. And everybody is within the same age bracket. So when we're talking about traction alopecia, when I have a client that has traction alopecia, they're normally between the ages of like 17 and like 28, right? Though, and like 30. Those, that's around traction alopecia. When we're talking about like CCCA, those are women that are around like the ages of between like 35 and like 45, right? And then when it comes to excessive cerberic dermatitis, those are all women within their like starting from 55 and up. The oldest client I've ever had has been 80 years old. So when we when we look at the facts and when we look at the patterns and the routines, all of the evidence is here. And again, I'm not here for the people that want to go back and forth. I'm past that. There, there are pages for you to go debate on. There are blogs for you to go argue on. I'm not here for them. I'm for the ones who want to elevate and move past this point, right? How do we attack salt and pepper hair? I don't understand that question. My mother is a licensed cosmetologist and she did use grease. I won't lie. It was Dooley Brownos Brothers, nothing. But this is the thing. This is the thing. So a lot of times we like to be like, oh, my mama used grease, but your mama didn't eat the way that you ate. Your mama wasn't as trifling as you are. Not you, right? But let's let's just be real. We'll go. Oh, well, our grandmas used grease. My grandma did too, but my grandma didn't take a glob of it. Like you couldn't see a glob of grease on my grandmother's finger. My grandma would take a little bit of grease and my grandmother put grease on my hair. And then she would style my hair and I could not touch my hair for a week. My, not my grandmother, what am I talking about? My mama. And I couldn't touch my hair for a week. And if I touched my hair, I would get in trouble. So we like to say, oh, well, my mama did it. Your mama also didn't eat the way that you ate. Your mama didn't eat as much as you ate. Your we, our mamas didn't have the type of uh, technology in front of us that they had. They were not as lazy as we are. They were more active than us. Our mothers were not putting grease in their hair and not washing their hair for six months. That didn't happen. My grandmother and my mother, when they did my hair, and if they put a little bit of grease in my hair, it wasn't globs. They weren't slapping globs of grease in my scalp. My mama was putting a little bit of grease in her palm, emulsifying in her hands, putting it on my ends, braiding my hair up, and I could not touch my hair at all until it was time for her to do it, and she washed it. And then she did the same exact thing. My mom took my braids down. She didn't wet my hair. Think about it. My mama was not wetting my hair or putting a bottle of conditioner on my braids and then taking my braids out. That's not how our mothers did our hair. What are we talking about? Our mothers sat there with us in between their legs or standing up in the kitchen, under our braids, probably with oil or like a grease as they went. Then they detangled our hair, then they shampooed, then they blow dried. Then after they blow dried, they either pressed it out and then styled it or they would braid it up. And my mom like put beads on the end of my hair, kept it moving. Our mothers were not doing washing goals on our hair. So when we are always speaking of grease and how our mothers use grease and how they didn't use grease the way that we're using grease, we cannot constantly be, oh our ancestors use grease no no that's not it right so even with your with your mom your mother like in the hair salon in the hair salon if i'm doing a hairstyle yeah i use a pomade but that style is only supposed to be in the head for about a week maybe two 
And then if I'm doing, if I'm using, like, for example, I used to do like twisties and, and uh, use pump it up and the way we would do it, we were not taking uh, beeswax. I used to use Murray's beeswax. We were not taking Murray's beeswax and like rubbing it into the scalp. We used it to mold the hair. And we would use the focuser on the blow dryer to heat the, the, the Murray's beeswax and the pump it up spray up together at the same time. We were not packing the scalp full of oil and grease. That is what I want y'all to understand. I just rub it all over my hair after a wash. That's not something that you should do. Do you understand that your hair is porous? And just like if you rub grease on your hair, right? When you lay down, if you if you wash your hair, right? Wash your hair, blow dry it, put that grease on your head, then right away lay down on a silk or satin pillowcase. That silk or satin pillowcase is gonna have grease on it. So if that silk or satin pillowcase is going to have grease on it, why do you think that your scalp does not have the same grease that you put on your hair? It's not needed. All right. But that's neither here nor there. We're going to get into the science of it because I don't want to. I'm not here to talk y'all out of doing anything. Do what you want to do. I'm just here to give you facts. I'm here to tell you what you're doing and what the long term effects of the things that you are doing are. Do whatever it is that you want to do. All right. I'm going to just get through a couple of y'all um, um, comments, and then we're going to hop right into it. Oil damaged my scalp, but grease never damaged it. I need you to hear what you just said. Grease is petroleum, sis. Like, you, your con I love you. I love you. And I understand where you are trying to go, but that don't. If, listen, if oil, oil is a polymer that is it's not even a polymer as thick as as um grease is so that doesn't make sense the thing is what i need you to understand and the reason because key i'm looking at you and you look younger than me and if you're not girl you cute but i know you're not 63 and the woman that I just read that from, she thought the same way that you think and that's why I brought it up because I want y'all to see the parallels. I'm, and I'm not saying that you're being argumentative. There are going to be a lot of people that watch this video. Oh, what I, the woman that I just talked to that cured herself from seborrheic dermatitis that she's experienced her whole life. At one point, she was just like you thinking exactly the way that you think. It wasn't always seborrheic dermatitis. So do what you want to do. I'm just here providing information. So as y'all keep doing whatever it is that y'all want to do, when these scalp disorders surface, when these different things surface, you know exactly where it came from. The same way everybody knows exactly where this massive protein overload is coming from with everybody that use rice water. Everybody knows where it came from because I told y'all, do what you want to do. I am, I'm not even in that realm of trying to get you to believe what I believe. Believe what you want. Do what you want to do with your hair. I am here to present the information. Do with it whatever you will, okay? All right. Two trans twists is my signature. I felt the same way that other races let their hair, but... Grease prevents single strand knots. How? Single strand knots are split ends. So if you're, and I'm not being rude because I've seen you before. So if you, this is how this is going today. My channel is not for debating. I know YouTube is full of debates and opinions. I don't, I don't work on opinions. I work on facts. So if you're going to make a statement like this, I need you to match it with facts. Don't come in here and I'm not being rude. This is how I talk. Don't come in here just throwing out random stuff. Meet me with a fact because I'm going to do that for you. I'm not asking anything of anybody that I'm not giving. I'm not going to let anything come out of my mouth today without a tangible fact that is proven that you can go research yourself to match it. So don't do it. If you can't prove it, don't say it. So, and I'm not saying you can't. I need you to explain to me how grease prevents single strand knots. I need you to explain that to me. If you're going to make that statement, <clears throat> if you're going to make that statement, I need you to explain that to me. I'm a scientist. So if you got some pieces to hit, let's hit them. But this is for everybody. I'm done passing along false information. 
this will not be a place where false information lives. If you're going to make a statement here, back it up. And I'm I'm good with it. Let's but but. All right. So, again, grease prevents single strand knots. So let's get into it. How? What products can I use for my scalp? Nothing goes on your scalp but shampoo. Go ask the dermatologist. Don't got to take my word for it. Go book a consultation or go talk to a dermatologist and ask them what goes on the scalp. They're going to tell you nothing but shampoo. Nothing. The reason why everybody thinks something goes on the scalp is because that I just read. Give me a two if y'all want me to read her comment again. I think I'm going to have to read it again. I too has severe eczema or seborrheic dermatitis as it's called. So eczema and seborrheic dermatitis are not the same thing. I love you so much, but I need you to note that for yourself. This not to be, oh, you don't. No, 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 no. I need you to note that for yourself. I need all of us to only say things that are facts. Only say things that we know that we know that we know that we know. Only open your mouth when you know that you know that you know that you know. I'm not being rude, but seborrheic dermatitis and eczema are two completely different disorders. Okay? I need you to know that. I noticed as long as I kept my scalp and skin clear, eventually, you know, need, yeah, eczema, seborrheic dermatitis is an overproduction of oil. So you never need oil. What is the difference between oil and grease? What would you consider a grease? A grease is, a, a, is petroleum. Look on the back of every grease that you have in your house is petroleum. Grease is scented petroleum. It's petroleum. It's gas. The same thing you put in your car is what y'all putting in y'all hair. Gas is made of the and, and mineral oil. Same thing. It comes from fossil fuel. They put a big machine at the bottom of the ocean. It pulls out this big black tar that is all of the decomposed flesh that's on the bottom of the sea. Then they put it in this big machine. They heat it up. And at different temperatures, you get different things. At one temperature, you get the gas that you put in your car. The different types of gas that you put in your car. At another temperature, you get mineral oil. At another temperature, you get the same petroleum that y'all putting in y'all hair. So the blue magic, the grease, it all is it's the same thing. Don't take my word for it. It's fact. I'm 60 as an adult. I use I never use grease, but still have very bad separate dermatitis. For decades, finally did a detox from inside out herbs, separate dermatitis to party. Six years old, can I grow a thick five inches? Started using these three oils a size. Okay, so we're going to get into polymers. Everybody, listen, I love y'all so much. Everybody do what they want to do. You can be who you want to be. So, why does the scalp become really white after washing? That doesn't happen to everybody. It's happening to you because your skin cell turnover cycle is off. Every 28 days, the skin cells on your scalp die and they fall off. But if you are a person who uses any type of oil or grease, and I remember you, I remember you from yesterday, you use coconut oil on your scalp and in your hair. Coconut oil is protein seeking. Your hair and your scalp are a protein. So the coconut oil binds to your hair shaft and it binds to your skin. So if you, your skin cell turnover cycle that's supposed to happen every 28 days is not happening because you have a protein seeking oil sitting on your scalp that is like almost impossible to remove. You can ask any cosmetologist with the most powerful clarifying shampoo. It would take forever it's almost impossible to remove coconut oil from the scalp so the reason that your scalp is white after you wash it is because you have layers and layers and layers of dead skin that are still on your scalp that are not able to leave it is not normal to see white on your scalp after you get done washing if you do have white and most likely you're a person who either uses oil or grease or highly uh comedogenic products in the scalp and we're about to hop into polymer so y'all can understand what it is because I'm not going to, um, I'm, I'm going to, uh, be talking in circles. Uh, okay. So let me go ahead and, um, 
share the screen with you guys. I love y'all. I'm not getting upset or anything, but I do, again, want y'all to remember I am human and I have been saying this shit for a long time. But I'm not upset, right? But I just want to give y'all some facts. Y'all go ahead, take some screenshots. Give me a second. Y'all go ahead and take some screenshots whenever, um, whenever I begin. So you can see for yourself. I want you to go research it on your own. This is not a place for debate. I'm not trying to, again, uh, get anybody to do anything, right? Do do what you're going to do, sugar foot. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? So, all right, let's go ahead and get into it. Now, if you are a person, right, if you are a person who is used to using a whole lot of different oils and butters, and if you're a person who's like, oh my God, my grandma always grease my scalp, stay around to the end, because I'm going to show you the opinions of some grandmothers. But I just want you guys to know that we are not at a place where we have to be like super argumentative or anything like that. We are going to right now hop into the um, the chemical makeup of hair products. For everybody who has a question, so what do you think about this oil? What do you think about this butter? What do you think about? I'm going to explain exactly what I think about it. So I'm going to take myself off of the screen really quick. So yeah. But for those of you who, who are new to my channel, my name is Sin, <laughs> Sin Smith, and I am a licensed cosmetologist, herbalist, a scientist, and a couple of other things, right? If you are a person who is really, really down for learning the science of hair and you are ready to hear new information that you have never heard before and you are ready to link science with common sense, then you're in the right place. You are also in the right place if you are ready to be honest with yourself and have 100% accountability. You are also in the right place if you are ready to make some real life changes. But guess what? You are most likely in the wrong place if you are looking for a product to fix your issues. Because that's not what type of channel this is. I'm not knocking it, but that's not what type of channel this is. If you are a debating person, if you're looking for something to debate, or if you're a person like, no, that's not right. Wrong place. Or if you're looking for hacks to skip over things that you kind of already know, wrong place. Or if you bother by a little self promo, so just no trigger warning. I am not the girl that I'm reminding you of that had an attitude problem that used to talk to you any type of way. I talk like this. It's all coming out of love. I want you to be able to look in the mirror. All right. Follow me on Instagram and make sure you take a screenshot of your favorite part of this lecture. And, you know, I'm following people back. So do that. Now, make sure that if you have already subscribed to my email list that you go ahead and check your spam folders because if you ignore things, then it's going to just go to the junk. And I have so many different coupons and discount codes that I send you guys on the whim. So make sure you check it out. Now, let's look inside. We have so many different things as it pertains to hair products. So many different things that people are confused about. But let's look inside of hair products and look at some of their ingredients. Number one is water. Of course, it's often the primary ingredient and it provides the base for most products, right? And it's not necessarily because all oh, water is imparting moisture, but water is the thing that is going to break the hydrogen bond, make the hair a little easier to and accessible. It's going to paralyze the hair shaft a little bit. So when your hair is paralyzed because the bonds are broken a little bit, it's a little easier to maneuver around, all right, emotions. These are ingredients like mineral oil, shea butter, or various natural oils. They help to moisturize and add shine to your hair and like to your edges. We're talking about like an edge control, right? And thickening agents. Some products may contain thickening agents like beeswax, which helps to provide the necessary hold and structure. But we're talking about styling products. Styling products and the products that you are supposed to actually use on a daily basis are different. A styling product is a product that you're only using once every blue moon for a hairstyle. And then your, your regular everyday products, like give me a two in the comments if you've ever been in a beauty supply store and heard daily shampoo or seen daily shampoo. 
that that's because there is a difference between products that are for regular use and products that are only meant for hairstyles. So let's talk about polymers. In the comments, really quick, give me the word polymers. Take a screenshot. OK, polymers are used to give the product its hold and to keep edges in place. The reason that I'm pointing out edges is because I'm talking to my sisters and that is what one of our main priorities are. You want to slick and smooth everything. Well, that is what our polymers are for. All right. Stay with me. Fragrance is added to give the product a pleasant smell. And then the preservatives is used to exp extend the shelf life of the product. The other ingredients depend on specific the specific brand and its formula. Right. That's what's going to separate one brand from another. All of the specifics that they add different ingredients that are different for each specific brand. Right. Like, for example, Olaplex has its patent molecule, right? There's like, oh, this one does what Olaplex does. Nobody does what Olaplex does because Olaplex is the only one who has built a molecule, okay? All right. So that is an example of something that we're talking about. So my goal for you on this video is to learn how to control your hair growth cycle and see what habits are here for you and what habits are actually causing you to go back. Now, polymers, which are commonly used in hair products like gels and styling products for their holding properties are generally not applied, listen to me, are generally not applied directly to the scalp. Instead, they are used on the hair strands to create styles and hold them in place. Here are a few reasons why polymers are typically not used on the scalp. Now, if you are a licensed cosmetologist, you know this. If you are a licensed hairstylist, you know this. Do you remember? Do you care? Probably not <laughs> for some people, right? But polymers 101, go ahead and take screenshots when you need to. Number one is going to be skin sensitivity. The scalp is more sensitive than the hair strands. Applying products with polymers directly to the scalp can lead to irritation or discomfort for some individuals, especially those with sensitive skin. Number two is going to be clogging pores. Some polymers, especially those heavier styling products, may potentially clog hair follicles and pores of the scalp. This can lead to issues such as dandruff or acne on the scalp. OK, because remember, dandruff is not dry scalp. And this this is more proof of it. You don't even need proof for me. You can research that on your own. Dandruff is not dry scalp. Dandruff is oily scalp. Right. And dandruff comes from using heavy oils and butters. So if you're a person who is always experiencing dandruff, ask yourself a question. Do you use edge control all the time? Do you grease the scalp all the time? Do you use oils? Well, my love, that is why you have dandruff. OK, so not intended for the scalp. Polymers are not intended for the scalp. Most styling products, including those with polymers, are formulated for use on the hair, not the scalp. They are designed to provide hold, shape and control for hairstyles, not the scalp. Again, if you have specific scalp concerns and you're looking for products to promote your hair growth, then those are completely different things, right? You need to then, that is when you go see your dermatologist, right? If you need something to treat your scalp, or that's when you go see a cosmetologist who specializes in that, or that's when you go see a trichologist who specializes in that, and then you find a trichologist that does not have an oil to sell you, find a trichologist that does not have oils and butters for the scalp to sell you, and when you find a professional that knows what to do to kill the bacteria, then you're good, right? So applying heavy polymers directly to the scalp may have several potential consequences. And most of them are not positive for scalp health. Oh, none of them positive for scalp health, okay? Number one, clogging of the pores. Heavy polymers can potentially clog the follicles and pores of the scalp, and this can lead to a condition known as folliculitis. 
Give me a five in the comments if you've heard of folliculitis. There are so many women with folliculitis that it makes no sense. And no one knows where it comes from. But then when and I have so many clients that I was, they have folliculitis. And when as soon as I look at them, I can see that it's folliculitis. Let me show you. This is what folliculitis looks like. So as soon as I see you, I can, oh my God, you have folliculitis, but there, and I'll say the first thing you need to do is stop all in the scalp. Oh my God, my dermatologist told me the same thing years ago, but she didn't want to listen because black women need to oil their scalp. Do you see where I'm going? Clogging pores may also contribute to the development of acne and pimples on the scalp. Irritation. The scalp is sensitive and heavy polymers can irritate the skin. This irritation can manifest as redness, itching, burning, or discomfort in the scalp. And now if we look in the comments of all of my live videos, these are most of the symptoms that most women are dealing with. These are most of the symptoms that most of you are going out and buying oils to stop in the first place. Oil, my love, is considered a polymer. Some of the oils that y'all use are considered polymers. Product buildup over time. The use of products with heavy polymers on the scalp can lead to product buildup. This buildup can make the hair and scalp feel greasy and heavy. So if, if just a greasy feel to the scalp can create something like folliculitis, what do you think putting grease itself on the scalp is going to do? Oh my goodness. All right. <laughs> buildup makes the hair and scalp feel greasy and heavy and may be challenging to remove without thorough cleansing, just like what we talked about earlier with coconut oil, babe. Scalp dryness. Sometimes heavy polymers can disrupt the natural balance of oils on the scalp, leading to dryness. This can result in flaky and itchy scalp. So what we are explaining here is the when you overuse products, what you end up doing is blocking the hair's follicle so that the natural sebum that is in your sebaceous gland on your scalp cannot come up, right? So then, yeah, your scalp is a little dry because you're blocking your follicles with butters and oils and creams and all of that. Or you're not washing your hair properly because you only use co-wash and conditioner or you only use apple cider vinegar. So your hair isn't being cleansed properly. So you have a buildup of bacteria on the scalp. All right. Hair thinning. In extreme cases, excessive use of heavy polymers on the scalp, along with other factors, may contribute to hair thinning and hair loss. This is particularly concerning if the scalp is not able to breathe properly due to product buildup and clogging pores. So I'm sorry for number five. What do you think about um, greasing the scalp with edge control, for an example, before you put braids in and things of that nature? Again, I'm giving you the information. You sit with the information and you figure out if whether or not the things that you are doing fit into any of these categories. I'm not here to say that. To maintain a healthy scalp, it is generally best to avoid applying heavy polymers directly to the scalp. Instead, focus on using scalp-specific products such as shampoos and conditioners formulated to address your specific hair and scalp needs. If you have concerns about your scalp or you are experiencing any type of issues, it's really important for you to see a dermatologist. I will have um, one of my favorite um, shampoos and conditioners. That's a treatment for seborrheic dermatitis, dandruff, and so many other different um, scalp inflammations that we've talked about today, like dandruff. And yeah, I'll recommend that to you guys for a minute. But yeah, many hair care products, especially styling products, may may contain certain polymers such as hair gels. Okay, hair gels are always holding polymers because that's what they're supposed to do. Understand that as a cosmetologist, I am also a hairstylist. And as a hairstylist, I understand. I'm not saying, oh, polymers are bad. Stay away from polymers. But y'all have made polymers your first role of hair care products when in reality, they're supposed to be like backup plan, not even plan B. Like polymers are supposed to be those products that you're only using once every blue moon. All right. So you want to make sure. 
that you're doing the right thing, right? So again, hair gels often control polymers. That's why they're able to hold the hair in place. Hairspray 100% controls contains polymers to be able to control the hair for a foam hold no, my number one thing that drives me insane is styling creams a styling cream is made by melting down a wax adding oil and water so when you're using a styling cream and you're putting a styling cream in your hair you are literally rubbing wax into your hair. And when I say wax, I'm talking about the same wax they make crayons with, not the same exact wax, but a wax they make crayons with. That's what you rubbing into your scalp whenever you just slapping creams on your hair. And then if you like, if you doing your twist out, your two strand twist, and you have so much cream that your twist is white, Baby, all of that is in your scalp and is everything is good until it's not. Hair weathering takes anywhere between five, five weeks to 15 years to set in. So for the people who are like, oh, I grease my scalp and it's feel, it feels good. If you've been doing it under 15 years. Mm -hmm. And guess what? If you've been doing it longer than 15 years, that just that doesn't mean that it's not going to catch up to you. It just means that it hasn't happened yet. It's like Russian roulette for you. I'm just being real. Pomades. Pomades is the same as that thing. Pomades would be in the category of an edge control. And pomades are made with some of the thickest polymers. That's why they give you great hold. All right. And then leave in conditioners, not all leave in conditioners, but a lot of your cream based leave in conditioners are polymer based cream based leave in conditioners are polymers, period. They're polymers, period. It's, it's nothing to talk about. Am I saying that polymers are bad? No, but polymers are not meant for the scalp. They're only meant for the hair shaft and they're temporary products. And they're only supposed to be used in short, like in, in very small amounts. Next up are serums. Serums can contain polymers as well. It just depends on what serum you're using, but a serum does the same thing. It is a styling product. That's why if you see your hair is frizzy and then you add a polymer to your hair, you'll notice that your hair is no longer frizzy. Why? Because that polymer is putting a coating, a very light coating on the hair, but it's the coating on the hair right? Lastly, it's going to be heat protectants. A lot of people say like, oh, it's a scam. Heat protectants don't work. That's not true. Heat protectants are polymers and they produce a layer of a product on top of the hair shaft that reflects the heat. So your hair shaft isn't absorbing as much heat. So this is why you guys have to learn what the difference is with all of these different products. It's not as simple as, oh, this, this new product came out yesterday. I'm about to try it on my scalp. Don't do that. Because you don't really know exactly what you're using. It's so important to know that all not all polymers are made the same. Some products carry certain uh, polymers that are water soluble. So just because it looks like it's not that heavy doesn't mean that it goes on the scalp. When you go into a hair salon, I want y'all to pay attention. Go watch Janae Mickles videos. Go watch the Master Stylist videos. Anytime they spray leave-in conditioner, they never part the hair section by section and spray leave-in conditioner on the scalp and then draw it down to the ends. No, they do an overall spray around the hair because leave-in conditioner is for the hair and not the scalp. And they're not explaining it. They know why they do it. They've been tested on it already. Okay. So these are the things that I really want y'all to think about. We have black tea, black back in stock, you guys. So if you want to get your hands on some of our black tea, then make sure you go over there. All right. I'm going to take myself off the screen really quick, just so we can talk. Like, how are you guys feeling? so far about this. How are you guys feeling? Let's get into some of the comments. I don't know where I left off. Grace prevents strangle strain not, so I'm still waiting on your answer. So I hope, I hope that for me saying that, you understand, I hope from so far, what we just talked about that your question, this question is answered. I hope that 
from us talking and understanding what polymers are, you can see how there are no products that belong on your scalp and why they don't belong there. When I say don't put stuff on your scalp, I'm not saying it just because, oh, no. No, like it's like a real reason. So why does it lower okay? My follicles are going. No, they're not. No, they're not. I feel like oil or grease in the scalp is not the problem, but not washing our hair regularly. No, that's not true. That's not true. For everybody who thinks the oil in their scalp is good, I want you to put the same amount of oil that you put on your scalp, put it on your face. Put it on your face. Yeah. My thinning hair is growing back. A little air from. What's your opinion on hot oil treatments? I love y'all. Y'all gonna have to go watch other videos. I can't repeat myself today. I'm in a great mood, but saying I really appreciate the information. I'm learning from you. Sorry for asking silly questions. It's just my no. You're not asking silly questions. And the thing is, this is the thing. When I when I answer, I'm not irritated. I just want the when I answer like really, I want you to hear the question that you asked me. So even if you decide, oh, she don't know what she's talking about. When you do it, I want you to feel like, wait a minute. And like, go sit down and really think about it. I'm not saying any, you are not irritating me. I promise. Ask your mom. Stop. I'm going to block y'all. I'm going to block you. My lips are changing colors. Why? Why is your mom's lips changing colors? No oil should be used. Expect to detangle or cure an infection. <sighs> when you're making young girl hair care, what have you decided when you're making young girl hair care was? Plants ponytail video. Oh, okay. To be honest, <clears throat> I don't. The reason that I haven't made that video is because there is not a different way that I do my daughter's hair from the way that I do my hair. That's never, it's never been a thing. Even when I was a cosmetologist in a salon, there are not different combs and brushes than the ones for my daughter's hair. So I don't, I'm not a children's hairstylist, so I don't feel comfortable making nothing goes on the scalp, y'all, no matter what. Okay, we're going. So I need, if you just got here, baby, I need you to rewind and rewind and watch up to this point. Oh, yes, baby. The blue tea is always available. It is always in stock. How do you get your teas? Is it on Amazon? What do you mean? Well, I have an apothecary. And no, we are not on Amazon. I want to be healthy inside and out. Yes. Edge control is like magic eraser for my edges. <laughs> but listen, it's only because edge control is a polymer, right? So... Even when I do use edge control, which is so rare, like it's so rare. I put it on my fingertips, I emulsify it, and then I like I like put it on my hair like this. And then I use a comb because I'm just controlling it. I'm not like swapping it down. So the thing about the thing about no, I ain't gonna go. I'm not gonna go. <laughs> I don't wanna go. If they put just half of the oil that is in their scalp on their face, it will look like, that's what I'm saying. Because our hair and skin produces its own oil. Just keep your hair and scalp clean. It's so simplistic. And I think that is where everybody, that's where everybody makes their mistake. And I think that's where all of the confusion comes from. Because for whatever reason, like, like even, don't get mad, but it, there are a couple Black women in here, like, you will fight tooth and nail to be incomplete. 
You're complete. You don't need anything outside of you. You're complete right now as you are. You don't need anything outside of you. You do not need to oil your scalp, like at all, like at all, not even a little bit. So these are things that I really, really want all of us to think about. Like, I think that one of the main issues, one of the main issues that everybody has is everybody wants to know like some blanket, like, oh, what do we do? Okay, so since my child is young, I will conditionally then should she learn to put her hair in ponytails until the next wash week? Um. So I would need to know more about you, your routines, your daughter, your patterns. I, I can't because I do this for a living. So I do consultations for a living. I can't I can't like like just tell you everything to do. I need to know more about your daughter's hair, more about her texture, more about her age, more about all of that stuff, because the thing is. And and the reason that I, I I skate around this topic so much is because I'm not here to not chew. I know you you've been around forever, Trina. Not you, but I don't, I'm not here to like go back and forth and debate with people about their kids. I don't, I don't do that. But one thing that I used to tell women, which is why I stopped doing children's hair, like, a, like if I did hair for over a decade, I probably only did children's hair like the first two years because women refused to listen to me. Like when, what, what we failed to, to accept, right? What we failed to accept. If, how can I put this? Okay. If 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 Cerberi, if if the natural hair growth cycle, here this time, okay. Stay with me. If the natural hair growth cycle goes anogen, catogen, and telogen phase, and then back to the anogen phase, right? The telogen phase is the phase of your hair growth cycle where it's resting, where it's not growing that much, right? And the thing that in listen, the thing that invokes the telogen phase of the hair growth cycle is stress. Stress from the outside world, emotional stress, tension pulling on the scalp, tension from braids, tension, any type of pulling, any type of pain, even if it's not pain, any type of like harsh tension. So, oops, excuse me tight ponytails, all of those things are all stress, especially for a child. The human hair growth cycle is seven years. So if your daughter, if your daughter is six months old, the energy phase of the hair growth cycle lasts for a minute. So if you are putting your daughter's hair in tight ponytails, before her first hair growth cycle is finished, which is age seven, right? Then you are causing your daughter's hair growth cycle to be stuck in the telogen phase of the hair growth cycle. So for your children, you don't do it any different than you do your hair. It's even more simplistic because they ain't got to go to work and they don't have nobody judging them. All you need to do with your children, baby, your child, your daughter is to leave her alone. Leave her to hell alone. Leave her alone. Her, her hair follicles don't even know they hair follicles yet. The human hair growth cycle takes seven years. Your daughter is only two years into her first hair growth cycle. Not because of you, but that's why I stopped doing hair. Because what I'm about to say to you, women didn't want to hear. They're like, girl, whatever. My daughter about to be in cute little ponytails and little barrettes. And that is why little black girls' hairs grow slower than everybody else. Because if you see another little girl, same race, same age, she don't have ponytails, barrettes, all of those ponytail holders, the little bows and the ribbons. No, her mama shampoo her hair, blow dry it, and then she may flat iron it on low heat, put it in a little ponytail and leave her alone. Put her little cute headband on, a little ponytail on until the next time she wash her hair. That's it. Like there's nothing... Leave your kids' hair alone. But see, the reason, and, and the thing is, we like to be like, oh, black girls' hair doesn't grow as much, but nobody wants to take into accountability the process and where things start, where things start from the very, very beginning. 
That's why Beyonce was smart what she did with her kids. They, that's what I'm saying. Like, if like for your daughter, put her hair in you, your daughter is two years old, right? You can wash her hair, blow dry, shampoo her hair, condition it, spray some leave-in conditioner in your daughter's hair, blow dry her hair, and you can put her hair in two French braids going straight to the back with like some cute little, maybe like a two cute little braids right here or something like tension freestyles. It could be light braids. You don't got to use a bunch of putty and edge control. The most simplistic styles ever. She's two years old. She just hit the world. She don't got no job. She ain't got nothing to do. Like, keep it simple. You don't, you don't have to do all of that. And that's that was the parallel that I was trying to draw for the people who came in late. I'll put this uh comment back up. That is the parallel that I'm drawing for you guys. Like, for you to see, it doesn't take all of that. Like, you don't have to put all of this in your hair. I will read this again for the people who just came in. I had cradle cap as a baby. Cradle cap is cerberic dermatitis in babies. That's what cradle cap is. That we just call it cradle cap, but it's cerberic dermatitis in babies. Okay. She said, I had cradle cap as a baby and I suffered with cerberic dermatitis most of my life until I applied your wisdom. I shampoo and condition with products in the same family as well as blow dry and style once a week. I do not apply oil to my hair unless needed to detangle before shampooing. My cerberic dermatitis is gone. My hair is shiny, healthy, and manage manageable. I'm enjoying my hair for the first time ever. No more tears, no more embarrassment and painful treatments. I can wear black clothes. Can you imagine how I feel? I can go on and on about my results. Please leave these oils, butters, and petroleums alone. I'm 63 and my thought and thought I was going to die with cerebral dermatitis because it was with me all my life but not anymore send out thank you so much so this is the thing i don't really understand why we still why we're still having this conversation this is a 63 year old woman so everybody who still greases their scalp you do it because your grandma do it that's your grandma she's 63 if you in your 20s that's your grandma right there she's 63 You have no idea how many women her age I help. And it is like a passion of mine. That's why I say I will never go back and stand behind the chair. Not because, oh, it sucks, but it's just I'm so fulfilled doing this. But at the same time that I'm fulfilled doing this, it's, it's almost like living in two different realms at one time. It's like living in two different dimensions at one time. Because I'm in one dimension with women who are in their 40s, 50s, and 60s that used to do X, Y, Z. And now they're like, damn, I messed up. Okay, how do I fix it? But then I go to this realm over here, and it's those women in their 20s. The, the same women, but like in the past, right? Those women who they used to be. Those women when they didn't want to hear nobody, those women when they thought they knew everything, that's what the world that I live in when I come on YouTube. So just imagine like, it's crazy. Like it's, I come, I go on one end and I'm helping heal the symptoms of a life of the patterns that y'all won't let go of today. And that's what I mean by saying like, I'm not here to argue with nobody. I'm not here to go back and forth with nobody because for what I know, I know, I know that I know that I know that I know. And it doesn't matter what anybody has to say. I know that my stuff is fast. And I'm not being disrespectful. The woman that I that was like, oh, I grease my scalp because I asked her. I said, OK, well, if if that's what it is, why? Give me some facts. Nobody will ever be able to meet me with a fact on why they need to grease their scalp. I, I'm waiting for it. I, oh my God, I want it. I'm a scientist. I don't believe anything is absolute. The creator can do anything. 
Science is a study of the creator. Science as we know it right now is changing. The way that y'all think reality is, science, like the world as y'all really think it is, is completely shifting and science has the proof to support it. And the science didn't even want to believe it. Scientists are mad as hell. They like, what? We got to go, like, we got to go back and undo. This has been my life's work. All of it was wrong. It, reality isn't what we think it is. Like, what? So nothing is absolute. But as it pertains to what we do know that we know about the human body, if you have something different, give it to me. Cause I I have no problem. Everything that I said, I told y'all, don't put don't put hair products on the scalp. I've explained to you why down to it the chemical makeup. I've I haven't seen any other videos online with somebody saying don't do this. Oh, hair products are polymers, and explaining to you what a polymer is, the difference in polymers, why polymers are used. Like, what are we talking about? I want us to get to the place where we're able to have certain conversations. Honestly, I think it's because people are judging you when, when I wash condition and put a headband on. But then that goes into like how you feel because I don't really give a shit about what people have to say. But at the end of the day, to me, that goes to this comment here. And this is why I really want to know, what is your opinion on this? I want to know everybody's opinion on this uh, comment real quick. Hold on. Once I get it on the damn screen. I'm going to read this again. I was just having this combo the other day. I'm sick of worrying about my hair. Why do I have to look like I'm about to rip the runway every day? Other races just make sure they look decent and clean and keep it clean and function. Of course, a woman needs to understand the assignment when the time comes. But bro, I agree. It's time to regain focus and put our energy somewhere else. So what is your opinion on if whether or not you think that you spend entirely too much time and we put entirely too much energy into our hair? And like doing our hair. It, and the thing is, while I wait for everybody's comments, right? I was watching, um, what was I watching? Love Island Games, right? It's, it's something that I watch when I don't want to, like if I'm about to eat and I don't want to be like gunned in, focused on something, just something dumb, right? When I was watching it, there are women, I think it was one black girl and the one black girl, two black girls. The one black girl that was on there wore her own hair. The second black girl had braids. Every other race of woman that was there had long hair, but every race of woman had extensions. One girl who was my favorite, which was Sully. Sully had micro links. You could see the little micro link beads. The other one had clip-ins. The other ones had like, Every last woman on the show had hair extensions. The white girl had uh, hair extensions. She had a bunch of clip-ins and stuff. But why is it that we all, it's only black women who make a big deal. I don't wear weaves. Oh, I don't wear extensions. Oh, I don't want, I'm like, oh no, I'm a black woman and I love myself. And then when I wear extensions, oh, like, why are we like that? It's only it's only within our community that we shame each other for the way that we wear our hair. Every race had wears hair extensions. I did hair for over a decade. I did micro links, eye tips, but it was eye tips. I didn't I didn't recommend that or did nor did I market that to my black clients. I didn't market eye tips to them because I didn't feel safe with them having eye tips. I knew that they would be at home putting heat in their hair and the heat could possibly melt and then their hair would melt on top of each other. So micro links, clip ins, all tape ins, they've always been around. But it was like some some hair extensions were better than others. And then on the flip side, some of my Caucasian clients, I wouldn't do weaves in their heads because I felt like it was a waste of money for them. 
because they need to wash their hair more often. And I don't want you paying me all of that money to get a weave and you need to wash your hair in a week or in a couple of days. It didn't make sense. So in the hair salon, we always had all of these extensions. They were just for certain clients. Just like certain clients with certain porosities are not allowed to get protein treatments. You come in a shop, you can say you want a protein treatment till you blue in the face. If I once I do your porosity test and I see you got low porosity, I'm not doing it. So these are things that I really want all of us to think about. I don't anymore, but I completely agree with her. Hmm? As for me, I listen, I wash and condition, leave in flat iron every two weeks, then once a week, I wash and condition, leave in, twist, sit under the dryer. Listen, do your daughter hair the same way, not the flat iron part. She's too little for that. But I say once, I told all of my clients, I don't I don't use a flat iron on a on a little girl's hair until after she's had her first hair growth cycle. Until at, until she's at least eight. Just how I got down. Scientifically, it's the only thing that made sense to me. But other than that, like everything that you do to your hair, minus heat, tension free, do to your daughters. I think we do too much, but black women are so judgmental. Last week, I washed and twisted my hair, and my manager asked why I didn't untwist it. It hurt. I don't, I don't want to say this, because I don't want you to get mad at me, because you've been on my channel for so long. But I really want us to have a real conversation right now. I'm just being real. I'm just being real. <sighs> Don't get mad at me, please. Twists are not a hairstyle. The way that you wore your hair to work is how I put my client's hair when I'm trying to get it out of the way. Don't get mad at me. If you went to the hospital, if you if you went to the doctors, right? Don't get mad. I just want you to be real. If you went to the doctors, right? Let's say your OBGYN, you got kids, you go to the doctors, you about to have a baby. And you're expecting a professional woman to come in the room, right? How would you feel if your doctor came in with, regardless of her race, with her hair like you took your hair at work and did your twist? Would you feel, and if you would, okay, if I, my doctor, uh, uh, Dr. Schwartz, she was a white lady. If that white woman walked in that damn room with her, let's say, like, let's be real. I'm not you, my sister. I just, let's be real. Let's, let's be for real. Let's be for real. Like, don't get mad. Let's be, hold on. Hold on. Don't get mad at me. Like, for real. Let's be real. Let's, let's, let's be for real. I'm, don't get mad. I just like, let's be for real. Like, let's stop playing. Let's be for real. Like, hold on. So you about to have a baby, right? Your doctor walk in like this. Hey, so, um, where, um, what's, what's, what's going on? How have you, how have you, what, and my hair not curly? It don't have nothing to do with it being curly. It don't got nothing to do with me being black. If your doctor walked in looking like this, would you feel safe? Because I know in the fuck, in the fuck, I would not. I don't get mad at me. Like, let's be real. Get out of your feelings. 
things. Not well, yeah, like you wouldn't, girl. Y'all crazy. Y'all are crazy as hell. We let's change the subject because we are obviously not gonna be able to have a real conversation on this tip. So let's move on because that is crazy as hell. And I'm talking about a woman of a different race. If my OBGYN walked in with her, okay, let's say with her hair all teased and like just crazy all like if she didn't even if if okay, uh let's let's um That's okay. Let's let's touch touch subject because y'all we are ob I'm obviously in a different environment. I'm 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 I mean we in a different environment. We in a different. Let's change the subject because I'm not I'm not. Listen, let's change the subject. Y'all can feel how y'all want to feel. Y'all stay there. I'm never gonna be. I'm never going to be, oh, I'm, let's change the subject. I'm, I don't, mm -mm. y'all feel that way. I'm not going to try to change y'all mind, but okay. But you know what? I don't, no, actually, I'm not about to do that. I call it bullshit because if, if I come, I can't come to y'all however I want. That's bullshit. Because I cannot come to y'all however I want. If I just get up out of bed and make videos, y'all gonna be just, it was just somebody like, why your lips changing colors? That's bull like, really? Because when my hair was shorter, nobody wants, like, come on, y'all, cat. I don't even use that word. That's for the kids. I don't, well, let's move on. Cause we, this not, we we I've, I'm obviously not on the same energy level with we not ready to be accountable because that that is bullshit and y'all know it. Like there's not a celebrity walking the face of this earth that that is safe enough to even just look crazy one day without being a me. So we really like that's crazy. I love y'all, but let's keep it moving because that that's. Let's keep it moving. Cause we that and that's this this instance right here is black women's problem. And I'm just keeping it 100 because y'all know that's some bullshit. Y'all know like really what's her name? The uh Gabby Gabrielle Douglas, was that her name? The Olympian. She was a black woman that made it to the Olympics, and y'all nobody. She met, she was viral about her freaking hair. Y'all was mad and, and dragging the girl because she didn't have edge control on. And now everybody going to sit in my live and say that if y'all, if girl, go ahead. Okay. I love y'all. Um. <laughs> That's crazy as hell, y'all, but let's keep it going. Yeah. Okay. That's crazy. Go ahead. Okay. I, again, I'm a licensed cosmetologist. I'm never. That's crazy. That's crazy. And then we about to move on. But I just want y'all to be accountable to yourself and everybody who's agreeing with this line of thought. I call a cat because y'all, a man got to. Y'all got a whole list of what a man got to look like. It's a whole list of what a man got to look like, what kind of car he got to drive, what how tall he got to be. But y'all, girl, I'm new subject. I love y'all because it's taking me somewhere else. And I do not want to have this conversation. That is, I don't, I can't, I don't, I can't function with fake shit. I just can't. I can't. That's, I can't. Anyway. But this is the thing. Why? What does you working in healthcare have to do with how you wear your hair? I don't understand that. And remember, y'all, this is, I know most people are used to like talking to like random people giving comments. Y'all are talking to a cosmetologist, right? So 
the way that y'all see hairstyling and hair care and the way that I look at it are going to be two completely different perspectives, right? Two completely different perspectives. So I've had clients, like my clients are OBGYNs, like brain surgeons, neurologists, all like, I've never had a client. I, I, okay. I don't want to, I love you. Let's keep him. Okay, so this is the thing. <clears throat> I'm just about to start kicking people out my live because I'm not about, listen, if for everybody who feels this way, go find your tribe because this is not it. We're judging twists. Like, what are we talking about? If y'all, like, are we really going to sit here and act like, and this is the thing, Kendra, you already know you've been on my channel for years. I've never said anything different than I'm saying right now. I've never thought twists were, twists are not a hairstyle. They're not. I love y'all so much, but they're not. They're not. I love y'all. Now, if y'all doing them like as braids and stuff, then okay. But just a couple of plaques, it's not a hairstyle. It's a placeholder. Just like if I put my hair in, in like, it's different if you have your hair like in actual like mini twists, like it's a hairstyle. But if it's a twist out that you're going to take out later, that's not a hairstyle. And I don't care how much in y'all emotions y'all want to be in. Like, it's not. It's not. What are we talking about? Really? It's not. She even said she didn't take the twist out yet. She didn't unravel the twist. Listen, I don't care. I said it at the beginning. Do what y'all want to do. I am not here to argue with y'all. All of the people that want to argue, uh, uh, you, you are constantly going back and forth. I am about to block you. I am. I love you. And it's cool. I'm not, I'm not coming down to this level with y'all. I'm not going back and forth. If y'all want to be unrealistic, do that. I'm sorry. We are not going to sit here and act like, because this is the thing. Every woman who on here talking about, oh, I wouldn't mind. It won't, it won't matter. It's a girl. Anyway, next, next topic. Sorry. Next topic. And if I'm sorry, it's bush. It's bull. It's bull. I'm sorry. That's crazy, but it's okay. And once again, we think different. The things, because there are, there are things that some women tolerate from men that other women would never tolerate. Everybody's different. So I'm going to let y'all live in this world together. I'm good. You would prefer her hair. Okay, so I'm about to block you. I'm Listen, I'm not arguing with y'all insecure Black women. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. Would I prefer if her hair was in a weave? Every woman on the face of this earth wears a weave. So you insecure black woman, get out of your feelings. This is not the place for you. I'm blocking you. Hold on. Because I got to do it from my phone because I'm on stream. Because I'm just not. I love y'all. I did not come on here for that today. And do y'all see? Do y'all see how easily a conversation goes from education to pure chaos? from the broken, insecure women. We've been talking for fucking an hour and 18 minutes. And the thing that y'all want to see, she's judging her because I'm not for y'all. Please, I am begging you from the bottom of my soul, unsubscribe to me, leave the chat. I'm not here for y'all. Like women, I'm not. Oh my God, let's keep, I'm, I'm just trying to block, hold on. I'm just not doing it. So y'all go on y'all favorite blogs like y'all normally do. Here we go. Here we go. Okay, so if you new to my channel, then if, if anytime somebody comes around somewhere, hold on. No, I'm not giving you an opinion. This is not a, it's the girl. Listen, 
if you are new to a channel and if you knew anywhere, if I meet somebody for the first time, I'm not just going to come up to them randomly talking. I'm going to research the person. I'm going to see what they about. And then I'm going to speak. And that's that we'll go to the beginning of this video. Our problem is we don't think before we speak. Think before you speak. Think before you speak. Think before you make a statement. Stop being offended all the damn time. Y'all are soft as wet tissue. All somebody got to do is, and y'all, oh, she's attacking her because she's black. She doesn't like, like, beef up. It's annoying. Y'all are annoying. Like, come on. We, like, we have went all the way over here. Like, I don't care what y'all talking about. That's a placeholder. And it's not a problem. She literally said she went to work. She still had her hair in twist. She didn't take the twist out yet. She didn't take the twist out yet. And the person said, why didn't you finish your hair? She just asked the question. She didn't finish her hair. She just asked why she didn't finish her hair because it didn't look finished. She also said, I didn't finish my hair. So how is the person being offensive when she's asking why you didn't finish your hair and you said you didn't finish it? It is literally like living in the fucking twilight zone. Like, if you don't know who you're talking to, learn the person that you're talking to before you start talking. It's just as simple as that. Like, y'all, it don't have to be like, dude, this is why I'm blocking y'all. Because we were, I was in such a good mood. Y'all are so exhausting. Like, I get it. I 100% get it. Oh, my God. I, like, it is exhausting to deal with people. Like, it is, it's exhausting. Because you come in love. You just come to help. And it's like, she, now we're attacking Twist. I swear to God, if y'all soft-ass women don't get off my page, dog, I swear to God, like, why do y'all come here? I don't understand. I literally put in my comments, don't watch if you sensitive. But then all the soft girls want to come to my damn channel and cry. Beat it. Beat it. Did y'all see Elon Musk earlier? He said, fuck yourself. And I'm not saying go fuck yourselves. That's not what I'm saying. But Jesus. I'm not here for y'all. The soft, the weak, I'm not here. We are not about to act like that's a hair. It's not a hairstyle. It's not. It's not. When I twist my hair, it is something that I do when I don't feel like doing my hair. It is a placeholder. It is not a hairstyle. What? We, I to live in pretend world with y'all to make y'all feel good it's not a hairstyle bro it's not and nobody's wrong for asking you why you didn't finish your hair if it wasn't finished just because as a black woman you feel comfortable walking outside with twists doesn't mean that it's attractive just because you want to feel attractive in it it's not i'm a black woman too i don't walk outside like that what are we doing like Beat it. I love y'all, but come on. Like, it's so annoying that we got to go here. Like, I'm sorry, but I'm skipping over. Thank you. I'm talking like we were all, oh, slavery was still being here. You, oh my God, somebody please get this band. You, hey, you. Bye. I hope that you liked it here, but I'm so done with you. I'm so, I'm all of the soft tissue. I want all of the soft tissue gone. Thank you. All the soft tissue. All of the soft tissue. If you disagree, disagree with facts. So other, outside of emotions, outside of emotions, how are twists a style? Outside of your emotions, outside of you just not feeling like doing your hair, and that being one of the easiest things that you can do, what is the difference between Twist and Felicia? Craig, Craig, can I bring you this real quick? It's the thing. There is no difference from Felicia's hair and the two strand twist that y'all call hairstyles. So if Felicia from Friday's hairstyle is not cute, then neither is yours. How are we like what's going 
doing, girl? So you too. So you. I hope you guys find counselors. There we go. Hope you guys found find counselors and therapists. I was no longer talking to you, love. I was talking to, do you see how when you mentioned, when you mentioned a hairstyle that came from the Team Natural community, how all of the Team Natural people who were waiting in the comments and waiting in the cut for some shit to argue about, do you notice how when you brought up a Team Natural hairstyle and the Team Natural hat, how all the Team Natural minions that was waiting in the cut came out? Yeah, I want you to think about that. Think about it. And that's all I'm going to say. Please, let's move on. Please, let's move on. Thank you. I now have hair grown back. Oh, what was your issue? And what was the change that you made to make your hair grow back? Please, somebody change the subject. Please, I am begging you. Oh, it is so annoying. Flat Now, a flat twist is different. Because you can do flat twist in an actual style. Like you can put flat twist in a actual hairstyle. So it will look like a hairstyle. It won't look like. I have a video on midnight clay. You should not put it in your hair. I'll add the link. Oh, good question. I have locks. How can I keep my scalp clean? So for you, it's the same as everybody else, right? But of course, with you having locks, you're not, you, you don't have like all the same product buildup and stuff that everybody else does. So you could like wash your hair regular, like everybody else does. Of course, you're still going to avoid, you know, the scalp. But for you, avoiding the scalp when you have locks is like one of the most important things that you can do. Because when you have locks, what you're doing is holding on to all of the hair that she is, right? So remember the average person is losing anywhere between 55 to 100 strands a day. And when you when you have locks, you hold on to all of those hairs within that lock, right? So your hair every day, your locks are getting heavier and heavier and heavier and heavier. So for that reason, the very last thing you want to do is put anything on the scalp. The last thing you want to do is cause any more like tension or blockage or anything like within the scalp, right? So what you would do if like you felt like something like your scalp felt itchy and you didn't really feel like washing it or something, then you could just use something like rose water or witch hazel on your scalp, like just with a cotton ball to clean in between your locks whenever you need to wash them. I know that a lot of uh, lock tissues like to use apple cider vinegar and baking soda on lock. And for the hair, for the lock itself, yes, it will cleanse it. But for the scalp, have you ever noticed that people who are older, a lot of older people that have locks, the older they get, the thinner their hair will begin to get. And that's because the you're holding on to all of the hair that you shed through your whole life. So your hair shaft is getting heavier and heavier. And if you are using something like apple cider vinegar, which is a pure acid, right? If you're using that, eventually it starts to break down the hair shaft and it starts to cause weathering within the follicle. And then it ends up becoming thinner and thinner. So that's why if you have locks, you just want to make sure you minimize as much. You just want to make sure you minimize as much like buildup and stuff on the scalp as you possibly can because you just don't want to cause like any thinning or breakage or anything of that nature before it's time, right? Because like I said, your, your, your follicle already has to hold on to way more weight than it's used to. Because like I said, as, as it pertains to locks, the only thing that you're doing when you have locks is holding on to all of the hair and it's getting heavier and heavier, right? So that's it. You want to make sure that you keep it pretty like simple. She looks like she came from the crazy hospital. If you're talking about, I'm going to give you one more time. You're about to get blocked too. I appreciate you seeing my hair is grown. I haven't done the clay mask. Just asking, what do you say? Um, Wash my hair. I'm going to, um, I'm going to give you the link. Oh, I'm going to try to find it now. Hold on, baby. I made, um, oh, shoot. I made a, um. 
a video on that exact clay. And don't get me wrong, as an herbalist, I love herbs too, but there are also certain herbs that you can't drink, right? There are certain there are certain herbs that are only for um Ah, that are only for external use, right? There are certain herbs that should never be ingested into the body. There are certain herbs that should stay away from the eyes, from the mouth. You know what I mean? Like, so it's the same thing when it comes to like different hair products and stuff. It just depends on exactly what you're doing and like exactly what your body itself is dealing with. Hold on, I'm just the video link I just added uh in the chat is the um the video for Midnight Clay. So watch that one for sure, babe. Yeah, watch that one for sure. I got a whole video about it. I explain like what it is, how to use it. I mean, how not, to, I just watch the video. I explain everything in there. I suffer from hair weathering for over seven months, but once I stop styling my hair with a wax every day and start blow drying my hair, my hair changed for the better, yes. Because it's so easy. It's really simplistic. They're all really easy fixes. Um, and I, I'm not I'm not trying to be rude, but it's literally what I do. Like most of my clients who have cerberic dermatitis, hold on, I'm closing these blinds. Most of my clients that have cerberic dermatitis and stuff like that, they all used to, I'm getting off here in, in five minutes because I gotta go cook. Most of my clients that used to have like uh cerberic dermatitis and stuff, don't get mad at me, but the the patterns that I'm talking about, like the two strand twist, I get all of them to stop with the two strand twist. Anybody that books a one-on-one -on -one consultation with me, one of the first things that I get them to do for so every client that I have, every client that I have that has um had at one point cerberic dermatitis or CCCA or traction alopecia. All of them, their number one hairstyle was two strand twists. I had all of them stop the two strand twists and change their patterns and routines. And without their two strand twists being their go to hairstyle, without their two strand twists that they undo, and then that's their hairstyle, without that, and with them actually giving their hair shaft a pattern and a routine, not a weave, you don't have to do that, do whatever you want. There are hundreds of things that you can do with your hair. <laughs> but once they stopped doing the two strand twist and they actually gave their hair a pattern and a routine, everything's over. So I'm telling you what I know. I'm not giving opinions. No, baby, you're just soft. You're just soft. That's all. Because have you noticed that there's still 74 people in here? And if you're so bothered by it, weirdo, then leave. Why are you still here? You're so weird. Nobody's a barking dog, baby. You're just soft. Only soft women are intimidated or only soft women feel away when I say something. You are soft as wet tissue. That's not my problem. And I'm not, I'm not for you. So I'm not the weirdo. You're the weirdo that's watching somebody that you clearly don't like. So beat it. <laughs> this is not anger. I'm just very blunt and very direct. And women like you can't take it. So get off my page. It's, it's just that simple. Nobody's upset. Nobody's upset. Nobody's barking. You're just soft. It's just as simple as that, baby. And I guess, guess what? Don't try to make me, don't try to make me softer because I'm not going to try to make you harder. I'm just asking you to beat it. So why are you asking me to be softer like you instead of just beating it? I don't get it. You're so weird. Women like you are so weird. Anyway, I think it's part of the game. Certain hairstyles get you places while others don't. And that's the thing. Hairstyles are temporary, right? So for example, right? For example, if I have a client every three weeks, right? She would, let's say, I, let, I'm just using this for an example. Let's say she got a silk press, right? She would get a silk press. Her silk press would last her two to three weeks. And then she would shampoo her hair at home, condition it at home. And then she would style it 
And then she would have a week of different hairstyles that she would do herself, different natural styles or whatever that she would do herself. None of them that allowed that caused her to do like washing goals or anything. My clients would do like flexi rod sets, perm rod sets, roller wraps, like so many. There are so many different styles you can do. A two strand twist. That's not it. It's not it. It doesn't. It do, It's not it. It's just not. It's just a simple, like, it's just not. And I have other videos about it, but any style that causes you to do your hair every single day is not it. If you're doing two strand twists every day, when you get up in the morning, you have to undo those twists and put products in your hair and manually ma manipulate each, all of your hair every single day. There is nothing healthy about that. Versus you doing a flat, flat twist, a hairstyle at on wash day at the beginning of the week and not touching your hair again until wash day. It's, it's two completely different things, right? Those are the things that I need y'all to think about. And I'm going to give you one more chance. I'm going to block you again. If I come, if I scroll down and I see you still talking, I'm going to block you too. Because I just, soft women are really annoying to me. It's so annoying. But they are going to do it anyway. Is their opinion, but you're just trying to give wise decisions. All you're trying to do is help. I'll do your job, sis. Keep giving up. Look, yeah, and that's what I. That's what I'm saying. Like, if I'm saying something you don't agree with, then go head off. Like, I watch videos on YouTube all the time. It's even even people that I watch, other herbalists that I watch, and sometimes they say things. I'm like, oh, I don't know if I agree with that. I'm not gonna be in the comments like, you stupid. I like because I I'm secure within myself and my opinion, so I don't need to go back and forth with somebody who has a different opinion than me to prove myself to be right. Because I'm I'm solid in who I am, and I'm solid in my opinions and in my decision making. So when I say you soft, that's what I mean. You soft if if you feel the need to you like you're you're not secure within your own opinion that's why you want to argue with me we can have two separate opinions cuz the thing is you're on you're at home watching me i'm not at home watching you hmm i've helped over 45,000 different women cure follicle infections i i'm i'm here to help people who want it if you don't want it beat it hey boo this is off topic, but I love your tea blend videos. I would love to see more of them. I it's so funny that you're saying that because um uh, Monday is my filming day. I'm not doing nothing tomorrow, which is why I'm live right now. But tomorrow, that's not true. I'm probably going to do something tomorrow. But Monday is my filming day, and I'm just filming a bunch of tea videos and herbal videos. But I really wanted to get most people solidify with like the science of the human body and stuff like that before I just hopped all into herbs because I really want everybody to like think about stuff. Let's hear me. It's no problem, babe. I threw out my cholesterol. I didn't even use it. There is another YouTube chemist who said to grease the scalp. It doesn't block moisture, but I would shake a girl. I don't know. Let her, hey. Seeing you are doing a great job. Y'all need to listen to learn and not respond to y'all mamas and grandmas lies to you. That's what I'm talking about. Like, I even told my grandma, I'm like, Grandma, you know, we weren't supposed to be doing that shit. She was like, For real? And then I explained it to her. She was like, Uh uh. Well, shit, I, you know. And I was like, What are you talking about? Like, y'all are, anyway, I proclaim. Thank you. I appreciate it. Oh, that's why sometimes I don't be on here because it's just, yeah, Elon Musk was, is, ain't that his name? The, 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 he said, fuck yourself, go fuck yourselves. Uh, oh, I got off. Oh, he go, he said, fuck yourselves. And then they was, he was like, what? He was like, go fuck yourselves. I hope, I hope that was clear. Like, man. I feel like I'm living in the toilet. Most of the time, is it's like, is this real life? You clearly was a misunderstanding. You clarified it. The point is true. Nobody leave places will take 
even non twist yet alone ones you should like that's what i'm saying like it's annoying why do we why are we acting like it's a hair and it's you want to know how i know it's bullshit because i did hair for over a decade and if my hair was not done when my clients got there especially after instagram days people was looking like what's wrong why here's like it's like girl it clearly, oh yeah. There wasn't no misunderstanding. Women need to beef up. That it wasn't no misunderstanding. Okay. The only problem that I have with this comment, your hair, that your natural hair is the hair that's growing out of your scalp. Do y'all realize women with black skin are the only women who walk around saying that? And I'm not calling you ignorant. We sound so ignorant to every... Do y'all know that every other race chemically changes the texture of their hair? But only Black women walk around. The only real, the best hair is natural hair. Like, the, it is, it, it, it is, it is, it's a sickness. It's a mental sickness that y'all all need help for. I'm sorry. Like. It's BS because you can, you, as a black woman, your hair can be in every form. That doesn't mean you have to pick one. Your hair can be in every form. Other races have to get their hair chemically treated to be in every form. Your hair can be curly, straight, wavy. Like it can do everything. A black woman that is not stuck in a box to say, oh, even though every race, every race of woman on the face of this earth changes their texture. Black women get per relaxers to go straight. Women with straight hair get perms to go curly. When I was in cosmetology school, I did way more perms than I did relaxers. But it's when, whenever I come live, though, it's really easy to see why why black women are stuck in the places that they're in. Because when y'all when y'all come online, y'all don't y'all are looking for offense. You look at most of y'all be waiting. Okay. I try to catch your lives and old videos because I appreciate the info and the real. I don't care about nobody else, but I'm here to learn things I didn't know. Preach this. I'm in class. I love you. Thank you. I do it for women like you. I swear I do. And I wish it was a way that all of the soft ones could just, just beat it. Like, <sighs> I do it for women like you. So please never leave. Ooh, recommended hairstyles for relaxed hair. When it comes to relaxed hair, I'm always gonna say roller sets, flexi rod sets, and stuff like any 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 style that causes you to like be able to like reset the bond without heat is one that I always recommend because it's super simplistic, right? You could give yourself a roller set or a flexi rod set or a perm rod set, and then you don't have to touch your hair again until your next wash day. And then everybody who feels like natural hair is the best hair, don't take off your bras. Don't put on no more deodorant. Don't brush your teeth no more because your natural breath is your best breath. Them little natural saggy titties is your best titties. That's the way God wanted them titties to be. God didn't want you to be having them all fitting up in no bra like this, talking about, oh, yeah, yeah. Let them hang low to the flow. If natural hair is the best hair, take them titties out there, bro, too, and let them dangle, too. Keep them bad boys natural, too. Keep that breath natural, too. Take that toothpaste, that toothbrush, and that toothpaste, all them Listerine strips, all that germ you be drinking, eating, all that germ. Take all that goddamn germ back to the place. That's what you do. Since your natural hair is your best hair, I want everything on you natural. Take off them eyelashes. And I ain't talking about you. Not I ain't talking about, I ain't talking about whoever the person is. Women who like natural hair only, you can't even see their eyeballs because their eyelashes so damn long. 
You don't even know what color they skin is because they got so much damn makeup on. But walk around, oh, you ain't got to you ain't right. So naturally, get in the shower. Naturally, take all that makeup off. Naturally, don't put no bra on. Don't put on no deodorant. Don't put on no lotion. Nothing. Be natural. And then we could talk about natural hair being the best hair. Today, I don't even really want to talk about it. I love y'all. I'm here to get the good information myself. I started to lock up. I'm best to grow my hair longer. Wait. Um, I just need to know more about you, babe, and your patterns to be able to answer that question because I don't know. I don't know. Like, I need to know, like, like what is where, what climate do you live in? Like, what are your patterns? What do you do for work? Like, how do you be sleeping? What's your diet? Like, it's so many different things that can go into that, babe. As long as you have it. As long as you have education on your topic, don't let them upset you. And I know what all of y'all saying, but a lot of y'all are new to my channel. So if you if you're confused about why I'm irritated, go back to my channel. Like for my I've had this channel for years. And everything that you're hearing coming out of my mouth, I've been saying over and over again. And this so just go to go to my older videos. Cause it's that's why just you coming on somebody's channel for the first time. Somebody that got a thousand videos or almost a thousand videos, go watch some of the old ones too. Okay? Because, yeah. Yeah. All I'm saying. <laughs> Literally, all I'm freaking saying. That's it. That's all I'm saying. Also, return my steamer. Only use it once. And when you broke down the money train to the products, that shit went right back to Amazon. <laughs> you said, here you go. They are crazy. Are they comfortable wearing them? But most of the women who don't like, I don't have a problem with the twist. Most of the women who don't have a problem with the twist are the ones that, I was just at Walmart. Me and my mom was just at Walmart and it was like four of them. And they all had their bonnets on and looked like they ain't touched a piece of water. So most women who like, what's wrong with that are the bonnet girls. So, okay. Not here for the, for the, for the bonnet girls. Thanks, Sam. Which hazel? Okay. So avoid apple cider vinegar products. Please don't put that in your hair. Is it best to cut your locks and keep them not that long? Just, I don't think that you should tell them. <laughs> a baby your son is little right i mean I, he's like under he's not in his 20s right he leave him alone just and then just just like just ask him as he's getting older just like start paying attention to his scalp like if your son starts saying like his scalp is itching or burning or anything then those are the times where it's probably time for you to like at least cut him a little bit like maybe they're getting a little too heavy I think the problem is a lot of women haven't had someone tell them the truth. You give it straight to us and I appreciate the tough love. And that's, and I think that's exactly what it is, but that's not my problem. Like my daddy was the old nigga because my dad was like, no, like that's not. And I, I think a lot of women, and I'm not saying everybody didn't have fathers, but I think that a lot of women didn't have fathers. And when you don't have a father, you don't understand tough love. Like you don't under, you think that. Anything somebody say, if if they're a woman, they, oh, no. What? Mm -mm. Like, I was taught, my daddy didn't teach me, oh, you the prize. No, my daddy taught me that my husband was just as much of a prize as I was. My daddy didn't just say, I'm the prize, and my husband got to submit. Like, I mean, not submit, but my husband got to walk on his hands and knees to prove, no. When, when me, before my dad passed away, and I want to say it was like probably like year two, the first three years of me and my husband married, woo! Because we was getting used to no infidelity or nothing like that, but we was getting used to each other. And when I remember me and my husband had an argument, he wasn't listening to me. I was the problem. I was. And I remember, and I called my daddy, and I just knew my daddy was going to be on my side. My daddy was like, What are you doing? Like, go sit down. 
Don't nobody want to be with no screaming ass woman. Like you need to be able to accept positive and negative criticism. Like my daddy used to be on my head. I know how to take positive and negative criticism. That's why a lot of people be like, oh, she's rough. I'm not rough. You just soft. You have no idea how to take criticism. There is a difference. Like every every set of criticism isn't going to make you feel good. And that's why black women in the same bullshit, because y'all only following up behind the stuff that make y'all feel good. And normally the shit that make you feel the best is the worst thing for you. The y'all favorite, the favorite, my favorite stuff in the grocery store is the worst thing for me. So it's like if, if that's the type of channel this is, like if you want something else, beat it. This why I train it. Where hold on, I need to make you a moderator. You are a moderator. Never mind. Trina, black people. Shit. You should be blocking them. Especially because you started the conversation, Trina. You should block that. Next time, it wasn't your fault. I don't mind you asking the questions. I'm not tripping on you. But next time you ask a question and it bring out the Kucha Mamas, block them. Especially since you brought them in, Trina, and you a moderator. Get that little funky asses out of here, Trina. Yeah, as soon as you see them posts, don't even let me see it. Just delete it. Y'all know it's going to irritate me and make my nipples itch. Like, come on, Trina. Okay, sorry. If you put your hair in a weave ponytail, like we're wedding or birthday, how long should you keep it in before you wash it out? Now, don't worry about that. Like, I would say, like, your standard hairstyles, just no longer than two weeks. Don't stress yourself out. Like, oh, my God, I got to hurry up and take it out. I'm not saying that. All I'm saying is don't make hairstyles like that a repetitive cycle, right? Like you said, do it for a wedding or if you take taking pictures or maybe you just want to have your hair in the updo for two weeks. That's cool. But that updo should not be your, your all the time style is all I'm saying. They came for Beyonce baby when she didn't comb her hair. They only twist. I want to see is on a little girl's ponytail. That's what, oh. Grown ass women acting like the styles that we give our daughters are hairstyles for grown women. And why are we getting mad when other grown women say that's a little girl's hairstyle? Go do your goddamn hair. She said it, not me. Oh my God. Felicia needs to get a comb. Um, I have, I'll add a blog post to my, um, to the description box when I'm done here. After conditioner, what do you use on the strands? It's difficult to keep moisture about a third or fourth day. Your hair absorbs moisture from the environment. I don't put anything on my hair. Shampoo, conditioner, leave-in conditioner, and serum at the very end, if I need it. I only add serum if my hair is frizzy. The reason that y'all hair is dry is because y'all coat y'all hair before the sebum is able to. So y'all hair is always gonna be dry. Your hair gets moisture from the environment. If you wanna keep your hair moisturized, don't put nothing on it. Rewind to the very beginning, that comment that I added, she's 63 years old. She don't put nothing on her hair, believe in conditioner, and her hair is more moisturized than it's ever been in her life, and she's 63. Oh, I've never known. Do you add products apart from heat protectant? You see, you don't add heat protectant to your blowout. This listen to me. Leave in conditioner is the heat protectant for the blow dryer. The reason that y'all hair feel crazy and crunchy is because y'all are spraying thermal heat protectant on wet hair before you blow dry it. Leave-in conditioner is the heat protectant for your blowout. When it says leave-in conditioner, it means it's conditioning your hair for the bond to be set. That's it. 
That's what leave-in conditioner means. Each word on a product means exactly what it says. Leave-in conditioner is a conditioner that you're, it's something that you're leaving in the hair to get your hair in the proper condition to receive the heat from the blow dryer or whatever else that you're doing. So you don't, you don't need a heat protector unless you're going to flat iron your hair. If you're not flat ironing your hair, you don't need a heat protector. You guys, you're incredible. I love you. Thank you. Never thought about it like that. I don't even know what I said. I don't understand. I'm not offended. You help me see why I was wrong. I was running late, but next time I'll just be. And listen, see. I see for everybody who got blocked. If you watching me, ooh, if you watch me on your baby daddy channel or your auntie channel or something, you didn't even have to be blocked because this is why I make the type of videos that I make. I am a mirror. I want you to see yourself for the things that you're doing. And that's why I'm only here for women like Trina. I'm only here for women with big draws. You hear me? Only women with big draws. Women wear big draws, okay? I'm not here for y'all little soft little baby panty little girls. Okay, I'm not here for y'all. She like, I'm not offended at all. You are right. I didn't have time to style my hair. So I went out like that. And it, it wasn't a hairstyle though. And she said, you're right. Damn. Like I did, it, that's true. It wasn't a hairstyle. My style was not finished. I messed up. I'm gonna make sure that I fix it. Next time, it's just that simple. We could keep moving. I love you. Thank you, boo. Now, listen, Monday, I'm recording your video. Oh. <laughs> Monday, I recorded a video for Lena on locks. Locks for Lena. Oh, that's the first time I said that, but I'm going to say it in a video. Locks for Lena. We're making a video about locks for Lena. Beautiful, sutton, sexy pepper. Lena. Ooh. I'm not leaving. I'm here to stay. I'm thinking about going back to relaxer. If you got to, but we just gonna talk about how to do it. If you relax your hair, even the people who've been relaxing their hair and their hair been falling out, is because you relaxing it to it's 100. You are only supposed to relax it about 70. percent You still want to see some curls in your hair. You do not relax your hair until it's bone straight. That's our problem. They dolls are being gangster outside. I wish I could find a hairdresser to go to every two weeks. I'm going I'm to try to work on it for you. I was about to lie and say that I'm working on it. That's not true. I'm not. I'm going to try to work on one for you all, like a list of cosmetologists. Oh, thank you. And listen, I love you because you literally have all of them. I'm packing, I was packing an order today. Everything goes, the last orders go out on Monday. Natural breath is the best. That's what I'm saying. Bird might poop on eye. On their eye. I don't really know. I don't know how. I don't know how we got there. I mean, I, my hairline is fragile naturally, but due to separate dermatitis, the flakes. Topical mess now, so it's better. How do I go about strengthening my hair to grow back my edges fuller? I'll leave a video link in the description box because I have a video for you on that. He's nine and he don't want him past his shoulders. He said, "Oh yeah, well, mama, sure. Well, you don't even have nothing to worry about because I was gonna say like, why? I mean, he don't wear a bra, but if he was girl and he did wear a bra, like like once he get past like where." A bra strap would be then then you worry about cutting them. But if he don't want them to get past here, then you don't even gotta worry about that. You'll be fine for him. You'll you'll be fine. As long as because it's longer than that that I was gonna say, just don't let him go like all the way like to his butt, like past his waist or anything like that. But if he don't want to pass his short shoulders, then that's my problem, beautiful. All those chemicals cause issues. What chemicals? What's the purpose of manipulating your hair to style it? If you, I don't, I don't really. 
Yeah, you got authority, girl. Bye. With moderators, as a moderator, that is your job. When these little funk or mech flexors come in here, please get them out so I don't even have to see them. It annoys my spiritual. It annoys my spiritual. Yes, you do. Well, you have colored your hair. What should you use to keep it from breaking off, causing further issues? It depends on what you did to color it. Because you can't prevent it. Once you break down the bonds, and if you do it wrong, that's it. That's why you shouldn't color your hair, because everything can't be reversed with hair. Hair isn't like your skin. Yes, Sophia, you got locks too. Duh. Yes, lock video. I just didn't, I don't know. I just didn't think that many of y'all wanted, um, I didn't think y'all wanted to see those. Didn't have all your teas yet, but I'm working on it. I bought all the soaps. Yes. Oh, you bought all the soaps. I didn't. Okay. I need a tutorial for brown shampoo to flat iron blow out. Do you have one? I'm new to blow drying. So just go on any video that you see of me blow drying my hair. It is so simple. Like it's not, it's nothing like deep, but I'll do another one. Thoughts on silicones. I have a video on that. I'll post it. So before I go, I will share the screen with you guys so you can see how to get your hands on my teas. And we've actually added a whole lot to the apothecary and more things are coming now. Um, but um, yeah, hold on. Let me, let me, let me head over there for you guys. Let's head over here for you honeys. <laughs> So my website is scrolling at the very bottom, www.sandsmith.guru. The website is on the bottom and has been there this whole time. But I am about to share my screen with you. And then I am about to go make some barbecue rib tips. Are you doing a holiday blend? Oh, girl, why are you trying to spill the beans? Yes, I am. But it's not coming to next week, though. Hold on, boo. Hold on, sugar. All right. All right, sweets. So this is my website. Before we start moving along, I know there was a lot of people who are confused about where to start. If you are really, really confused about where to get started, you can head over to my website and join my seven-day challenge, right? Sorry, guys. So over on my seven-day hair growth challenge, I explain everything. Like if you are somebody who is looking ready, is ready to get rid of like your old habits and start over from scratch with new, with a brand new set of rules, not rules, but with a brand new section of information to put in your brain to remove the last set of things that you learn. The seven day challenge is awesome sauce for that. So just head over there, check out some of the reviews and look at my testimonial page so you can see everything that everybody has to say about it because you do not have to take my word for it at all. I have so many reviews teaching you guys, well, teaching you guys that show what everything is about. But anywho, if you want to shop, right, for my herbal blends, soaps, tinctures, anything, you head over to this tab at the top. It says home. And then the next tab over is simple apothecary. You can shop through the different parts of the apothecary, right? But if you head over to this first tab, it will take you to all of the different pages individually, okay? So, this picture here is of our omelet and hibiscus, right? Our dehydrated omelet and hibiscus. But here you can head over and see so many different options that we have. So the herbal bar, you click this button to get here. We have a mug bar, abstract and tincture bar, a skin, a soap and skin bar, right? A body bar, a smudge bar, 
And we have a goddess bar and a crystal bar. So it's just all about what you need at a specific time. When we head over to the herbal bar, obviously that is where all of the herbs are, right? And so as we are in the herbal bar, right, it is really, really easy for you to get lost, right? <laughs> um, and when I say lost, I mean like, and like, oh my gosh, should I just get everything? So make sure you read the descriptions of each herb so that way you can get to them easily, right? But over here, if you, let's say you don't want to go to this first page, you can just click right on where it says herbal bar and then it'll take you straight to all of the different herbal blends that I have. I love for everybody to add the brew buddy to their order because with the brew buddy, you get the perfect amount of tea per brew each time, right? And there are so many blends and there's so many more coming. A couple of them are sold out, but it is okay. You know, they're all of the ones that are sold out will be on their way back soon. So you don't gotta worry about that. But um, here are the blends. And then here we have our extracts and tinctures right now. I don't have any tinctures. Tinctures have alcohol in them right now. I only do glycerides. I'm doing things that are alcohol free right now, but we will be changing things up. Smudge bar, when it comes to the smudge bar, you know what smudging is. If you don't, let's say you like to burn like incense or like sage. We have different type of sage and um, different sage and herbal bundles. I also have different herbal boxes that you can get to keep all of your herbs in. We also have different burners, selenite healing bowls for you to use different herbal lighteners. You know, we have saw pimento, saw pimento. <laughs> we do have saw pimento, but palisantos, we have that, the raw version of it, and so many other things, right? You could just keep going forever on the apothecary. There are so many different options for you, right? And then um, as it pertains to the body bar, right? We have so many different things. There will be new videos on these three products here. This is a really good way, another way for you to use the different herbs that are in the apothecary. But again, video coming soon. We also have these gloves here that are amazing for scalp massage and all over body massage. They're made with pure silk. It is amazing. Then here is another one that all of that I request for all of my clients to get. And this is a rose quartz facial tool, but they also use this for the scalp to invoke blood flow and blood circulation on the scalp, right? And of course, we have all of the different soaps within the apothecary that you could get your hands on that are here. I can't even say which one is the top seller because we are remaking all of them and all of the soaps are handmade. We also have a crystal bar, right? I have on one of my Mala necklaces right now, but we have quite a few of them and a lot of different things, right? So you guys head over there. This portion is still... um. It's still growing a lot, right? But there's so much here within the apothecary as it pertains to the scalp bar, right? So far, all we have in the scalp bar is these gloves and our pure rose hydrosol, aka rose water. So for the people who are asking like, oh, what should I use, you know, on my scalp and things of that nature, if I have locks or braids, rose water is the thing. And of course, we have the mug bar. The mug bar is the place where I have all of these specialty mugs, right? And you guys just keep looking through. We are constantly adding more things to the website along with this facial uh, facial bowl and spoon that a lot of my customers use to do a lot of their herbal blends, a lot of their mixing, and a whole lot of other things, right? And then lastly is the goddess bar where we have our little yoni machine, right? So if you are a person who wants to use our herbs to do any like type of steaming down there, anything, there we go. And then we also, from the same, you know, little energy, we also sell our own, ver not our own version, but a version of menstrual cups, right? So check it out, right? The apothecary is full of a whole bunch of different stuff, right? And I'm still adding things to it day by day. 
So yeah, um, all of the links are in the description box as well as going down at the very bottom of the screen. So make sure that you add the things that you want to add to your cart and also know that you can add literally, let's, just for example, let's say you go on my website and you add like everything, like everything that's everything you add it to the cart, right? Once you add everything that's everything to the cart, you can get it all through financing, right? So let's say your bill comes out to be like $300. Once you go through, you go to checkout, like get to the portion where you go to put your card information, right? But you need to see that page. And right before you put your card information in, wait and go past the part where you put in the card number and all of that and scroll up. And then there's going to be a little square that says sizzle. And when you see sizzle, click that button and you can finance everything that was in your cart. So you can literally get a bunch of crap. I mean, a bunch of crap, a bunch of stuff that you want out of the apothecary. And you can book like even a one-on-one -on -one consultation. People finance their one-on-one -on -one consultations with me, or you can, um, you can join the seven day challenge through sizzle, whatever you add in your cart, whenever you click sizzle, you can finance it. All right. So I love you guys. Make sure you go shop over on my website. Um, my next couple of videos, the next time you see me live, I don't really know. I know I love y'all, but I'll be needing a minute and I gave y'all two days in a row. So I'll be going live. I don't know. I'll let y'all know in one of my next videos, but just know this next week is going to be herbal week. So be ready. I will have a video coming on all of the new things that you saw me add to the apothecary. So when it comes to the teapot that I showed you guys, the Yoni stuff, everything, just go ahead and get it. I'm going to show you how to use it. I love you so much. And until next time, bye, guys. Bye. This was so much fun. And as you can see, I'm blocking people all 2024. All 2024.